day we are bringing out the dead horse and reviewing Sword Art Online Season 1. Sword Art Online is one of the most watched anime ever. It is the second most popular anime according to Mal and searching for a Sword Art Online review gives 95,000 results on YouTube. So what I'm saying here probably isn't anything new or that you couldn't find elsewhere, but I want to say it anyway. I review shows I have something to say about that I'm excited about in some way either to tear to shreds or to tell you to go watch it. And I really do have a lot to say about this one. Before we begin, I must warn you that this review does contain spoilers. There's a lot I want to say about the show, especially the second half, and I can't really do that without spoiling some things, and then there are other things I want to get into detail with. So yeah, I'm going to spoil pretty much the entire story, and especially some parts at the end. So if you really want to watch SAO before my review, go do that now. If you are coming to this review wondering what I think about the show and don't want spoilers, here's my score sheet thing. So yeah, you see here, I did not like this show at all. And now we are going to move on to the story so I can explain why. First of all, I think it's important that you understand my mindset with SAO. I started watching it a couple years ago after some friends recommended it to me, and while I thought it was cool, I ended up dropping it around episode 16. The reason for this was because I could not take it seriously with all the characters being fairies. There were a number of other things I didn't like, but kept pushing through those as there were some things I did like as well. Keep in mind though, this is a couple years ago, and I really liked shows like Fairy Tale, Naruto, and Bleach. So I was far from a critical watcher back then. A few weeks ago, I decided to finally go back to SAO and finish the first season just to say that I could. So that part of the show is fresh in my mind, more so than the first half. I also approached it partly from the mindset of looking for everything wrong with it that I could and really wish I took notes while watching, but I didn't, so yeah. For those who do not know, the story of SAO revolves around a virtual MMO that came out, but when the players start playing it, they discover that they are trapped in the game and the only way out was to beat the game. This was complicated by the twist that if they die in the game, they also die in real life. While this isn't a unique premise, it was one that instantly hooked me. I'm a big fan of video games myself, especially of the MMO genre, so this matches my tastes wonderfully. I was really drawn into the world here, finding it fascinating how all the video game mechanics affected the world. The death feature made the suspense feel real, and there were some powerful moments when characters died. Similar to my thoughts on Tokyo Ghoul, the setup here was great. There are a few problems here, like the plausibility of how all the technology worked and things like that, but these weren't big deals, so I was able to look past them. Of course, that's not to say there weren't problems later on, though. One of the biggest issues I had with the story were the time skips. About two years' time passed in about six episodes, with these six episodes basically just being filler. They added very little to the plot. The characters in them have little to no impact at all, and they weren't even that entertaining. Then the show decided to focus on romance, with our main character Kirito falling in love with the main female character Asuna. It is true that I'm not a big fan of romance as a whole, so this probably fueled my dislike of this, but still. I wanted to watch this show to see Kirito and Asuna fight monsters, not fall in love and go fishing. In many ways, it felt like Asuna was just there to give Kirito a romantic love interest, not to be her own character with her own set of motivations. Of course, the fact that she's also trapped in games means that many of her goals would be similar, but still, there wasn't that much to her, and she was the best character of the show. But then the essay of Arc ends with some exciting battles, some plot holes, and everyone escapes and lives happily ever after. Or at least that's what would happen if the show knew to end before it completely turned into a train wreck. You see, not everyone got out of SAO, Azuna being one of them. She was instead been transferred to another game, AOLO, while all the characters are fairies. So Kirito ventures into yet another game to save her because all this makes complete and total sense from a scientific and technological perspective. But this is again a science fiction show and it seems impossible for someone to write science fiction without making things up out of nowhere. And unlike shows like Twin Tales and Kill a Kill that aren't supposed to make sense, this one tried to be serious and that's why this bugs me so much. But anyway, here we are in another MMO, but this time people do not die when they're killed. Take that, Emya. See, just because you're correct does not mean you're right. There is a death penalty, of course, but because they have to create some level of tension, they don't explain the death penalty, just vaguely hint at it a few times. That's one of the issues with this arc, they just have things happen without really explaining them. Like Kirito turning into a dragon to fight people, just how or why he didn't... Just how, like, he's supposed to have illusion magic here, not turn into giant dragons. And there's also the question of why didn't he do it during those other battles, like against all those angel creatures and that one tower thing near the tree. Another thing I do not like about this arc is basically as soon as he got into this world, he met another character by the name of Sugo. This makes sense, giving the main character a partner who can really help the story, except for the fact that Sugo is Kirito's sister slash cousin, and she just happens to be the first person that Kirito met in game, which is a massive plot convenience. Now, I could be okay with this type of development if it would let us explore Kirito's family life more, and I'm a sucker for a good story about family, so you really had something I could have liked here. 
But instead of taking that direction, they had Sugo fall in love with Kirito. Now, if there's one thing I hate more than needlessly throwing romance into an adventure story, it's throwing romantic drama into an adventure story. And if there's one thing I hate more than that, is throwing incest into an adventure story. Just why? Yes, I know technically they're cousins, and in Japan that's more okay, but still, that's... They stretched way too many things there to try and make it seem kind of okay, but it wasn't okay. They do show some of how Kirito's family issues cause him to retreat in the world of video games, and this could have been some interesting theme exploration here, but that doesn't happen. There's also the fact that the game itself makes no sense whatsoever. All the players take the game very, very seriously here, which doesn't make sense. People play video games to relax and to have fun. Sure, there may be a degree of feast and challenge or trying to prove you're the best, but it's all there to have fun. When the players are stuck in SAO, the serious nature of the players did make sense, but in ALO, it just feels stupid. In real MMO, you're much more likely to give instructions via belches, or to make bad puns, or break a plate when you're the first in the world to beat a boss, than to act as super serious as these people do. There are a lot of other plot holes and plot conveniences throughout the show. Kirito pretty much always wins just because he's awesome and no other reasons. Other characters very rarely get a chance to shine, and really the show is just a complete mess story-wise. I also have some issues with the fan service here. Now, there are many times when I can look past fan service. A lot of shows can do it for comedy, which I'm mostly okay with. Sometimes it might be justified to help the plot move along, or others may use it as symbolism. Sometimes even shows try and combine all those together, and I'm largely okay with that. But the problem comes when fan service is inserted without reason into a serious show. It's true, there wasn't a whole lot of it, but the times it was there it just felt pointless. Of course, nothing irks me more about this show than episode 24. Before this episode, I could look past all of these flaws, acknowledge them, but find the general adventure entertaining. But episode 24 just crossed way too many lines. It was a big penultimate showdown between Kirito and the villain, and they did everything they could to try to make the villain a disgusting, hateable person, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, as oftentimes you want the, to hate the villain, but that what they did here was just make the villain victimize Asuna, sexually assault her, say he was going to rape her, and just... That just went way too far. It made the show look completely pathetic, like they were trying to be edgy and mature, but backfired massively. The villain was pitiful here, and we all knew Kirito was going to win, so the tension was fake at best. This is another case of the show being way, way too serious, and went from just a bad writing but kind of enjoyable to being offensive with the way it treated Ozna. And when we actually got the battle, it was boring! A show like this needs to have a good battle at the end of it, but instead it was just completely one-sided the whole time. There was a deus ex machina here, almost very literally, which made it so Kirito could win without even earning it or anything. I have been ranting about this story for a while now, and so it's probably time to move on to something else. I know there are lots of other problems, and I've read and watched other reviews of the show, but I feel like if I added everything they said, I'd just be copying, and if you want to go watch them, go do that. I'll put a couple links in the description if you want to read or watch more, though, because I don't want this to take like an hour like some people. Overall, though, the story is just a complete mess. An entertaining mess, perhaps, but still just a mess. There are way too problems with the way the story was handled for me to like it, and it really seemed like the show was doing everything it could to make me dislike it. After all the problems I have with the story of the show, the characters aren't that bad. Of course, they aren't good at all, but they aren't so terrible I want to bang my head into the nearest wall, so I guess that's something. The main character, Kirito, is really just a bland shonen protagonist. He comes in to save the day, he is the strongest person in any video game he is in, but really, he doesn't have a personality beyond this. They do try a couple times to show a mischievous side of him, but it feels like the writers just knew how bland he was, so they tried to shoehorn something in, and it didn't work. They do give him a little bit of backstory with his family and how he got into gaming, but it was too little to do anything for him. Unfortunately, most of the other characters are even worse. The only character I liked here was Asuna, and that's because she had some moments of trying to do something, but unlike Kirito, she wasn't so overpowered, so there's actually some tension here. Well, until you remember that Kirito always has to save the day, so Asuna can't do anything. Kirito's sister Sugo is another one I could have liked, it, but they just failed on that opportunity. Instead, they just added her to his harem, and we knew that Kirito would never actually choose her because he had Asuna, so like, what is the point? And then everyone else is there for a background at best. None of the villains are that interesting, all those other side characters are forgotten, so yeah. Nothing to see here with characters. I will admit that Sword Art Online does look good, especially in the video game world. The backgrounds are all nicely done, the animation is fluid when it wants to be, and all those other compliments people give anime with regards to animation apply here. The scenes outside the game are less impressive, but that makes sense as they're trying to show the doll in an ordinary world instead of a world of a video game. There are some instances of still frames or minimal animation times, but I don't think I would have noticed if I wasn't actively looking for them. 
there were some good battles here, but there were also some more disappointing battles, which that was a letdown, because I thought Sword Art Online could at least do its action right. Though I think this might have been more the fault of a story that I wasn't able to get into instead of the animation itself hurting these. The soundtrack here I probably would have liked if it was in a different anime and not SAO. It is an epic soundtrack made by Yuki Kajra who is well known for her epic music. Unfortunately the music ended up working against the show because it only added on to the problem that the show was taking itself way too seriously so the scenes that they tried to make better with the epic music ended up becoming worse. I will say that both the openings were quite good, I liked the visuals and music for both of them so they are something that the show did not mess up. Final thoughts. SAO is the worst anime series I have ever seen. But despite this, I can understand why some people like the show. It has its flaws, and I only talked about the few that stuck out to me the most. But I don't think the show is made for people like me who are looking to evaluate the show critically. It's made to be an escapist fantasy type of story for those who love video games. The second arc here I found interesting from beginning to end, though admittedly part of the reason for this was because I was looking for everything wrong with it. And still, all the problems I had could not outweigh any fun I might have had here. And that brings us back to the final score. I give Sword Art Online Season 1 an overall score of a 2.39 out of 10 and a rating of Skip It. It may be true that some people like this, and this would normally make me consider giving it a worth checking out, but I just can't. If you're someone who seeks out reviews to tell you if you should watch a show or not, the odds are you're not going to be someone who will like it. So yeah, that's my score. For recommendations, this time I have two shows that are currently airing and just about to finish. The first of which is Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? It feels like SAO in a lot of ways the world seeming like a video game and there being a dungeon filled with monsters. And you cannot forget the fact that the protagonist picks up a harem along the way. It doesn't take itself too seriously, it doesn't try to be anything more than the generic show it is. And this ends up making it a lot of fun. It's far from great, but it feels like it was the path that SAO should have taken. My second recommendation is Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. This is another show with its share of problems, but also has its awesome moments that make me forget all those and remind me of why I love action show. So if you're a fan of action shonen and aren't bugged by the problems with SAO, you'll love Fate Stay Night. And now I'm probably going to get yelled at by the Fate fanboys for comparing their show to SAO. Oh well, won't be the last time I get yelled by them, I'm sure. And that wraps it up for my review. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.